Welcome to the Mobile Games Playbook in association with Liftoff. Join us as we uncover the latest trends in user acquisition, monetization, and mobile game design. Hello, and welcome to the Mobile Games Playbook. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. This is the podcast all about what makes a great mobile game, what is and isn't working for mobile game designers, and all of the latest trends. I'm your host, John Jordan, and joining me today, we have two experts to uh, discuss the uh, topic of uh, user-generated content in producing effective user acquisition strategies. So, so uh, they, they are um, experts in the field. So welcome to uh, Nicole Danza, who is a Senior Manager of Creative Strategy and Production at uh, Liftoff Influence. Hello. It's good to be here. Hello. Good, good. And also we have uh, Sydney Bruce, who is Creative Account Strategy-UGC, also at Liftoff Influence. How's it going, Sydney? Hey, great to see you. Um, thanks for having me. Good. So um, thankfully we have two experts I and mean, we have me as the host who, who is not quite sure <laughs> what we're going to be discussing today. I've had, had a little brief ahead of time. Um, so, so maybe to kick off, maybe probably the audience is, is, is more in my um, uh, sort of more my level than your level. Um, when we talk about user generated content for sort of uh, UA, so basically marketing, uh, what are we talking about and why is this something that is now um, the, the industry is talking about well, yeah, why is this now important when maybe a couple of years ago it wasn't? Yeah, I would say four to five years ago when uh, TikTok wasn't as prevalent and there wasn't you know Instagram reels, a testimonial style ad or um, a skit of some sort did not hit well on like mobile advertising platforms um, to the point where when uh, our team got acquired. Uh, Sometimes folks would be like, oh, we shouldn't try that. But as TikTok became more ubiquitous, the social media platforms with human beings and like their faces um, plastered all over the internet, um, mobile, mobile advertising platforms can screen those types of ads and people watch them because they see it everywhere, they're entertained by it. And so we can use those formats that we see from uh, TikTok and Instagram and other social media platforms and use their formats and put in our value propositions about a specific app, make an entertaining story while still getting across um, why an audience should download an app of ours. So I guess it's sort of interesting. That some, something partly to do with technology, partly to do with the platforms and sort of the content that they're cooking up. And then over time, that's sort of like an education process for the audience. Whereas at one time, you, you, you know, a few years ago, you could have exactly the same ad you're doing now, but it just wouldn't work. So there's a sort of a, you know, a combined process going on there, which is how we consume stuff, which is uh, interesting. Um, so um, when we, we talked, talked about that in sort of the, the abstract at a very high level, um, when we're thinking about, um, you know, when you're starting out and thinking about, you have you know, obviously games and you have uh, sort of creators, influencers, and you're going to get them to U UGC. How does it, how do you start doing that process? Because obviously, um, I assume you have some sort of broad guidelines about what you want them to do. You don't give them sort of carte blanche, and and obviously, you know, we have games and audiences and how, how you tie that things together. So, so what's the sort of starting point for these sort of campaigns? I think it really depends um, on the client. Like for our team specifically at Creative Studio um, at Liftoff, there's a lot of collaboration with the client during the pre-production phase of the UGC process. So along with brand guidelines and any asset requests, we'll also discuss their user base for the particular app title. Um, our advertisers know the audience demographics for their apps, and sometimes they'll provide us with user personas, which may include gender and age breakdowns, user motivations, or what keeps the user, user engaged within their app. Um, I approach these conversations with the clients with a general knowledge of the user demographics anyway, because of the Liftoff Intelligence platform, or I have reviewed the Top Source app, which is where the ads are actually being shown. And I probably most likely work with apps in similar verticals, so have a general sense of the type of audience and creator that we want to work with. And then on identifying the right creator, there are several factors that our creator team uh, takes into consideration. One factor being, does the creator fall into the target user persona for this title? For example, a sports betting app's core demographic is typically males 21 to maybe 35. So we'll use creators who fit within this demographic to ensure authentic, believable content. Um, but it's really important to always test new creator demos because creator talent can reign supreme. 
So we've had advertisers show or let us know that the core audience is 30 something females, but we'll have a fantastic creator who is a male or a creator who presents younger than 30 something. And their creative is so engaging and authentic that it actually wins out over the other creatives with a creator who might look more like the targeted audience. So it's all about testing um, and then especially collaborating at the beginning with the client. And in terms of sort of the, sort of the workflow, obviously you're, you're sort of asking them to sort of create some, you know, a custom bit of sort of content. I mean, that's the UGC bit. Um, so obviously that's a much more engaged process than you handing them an ad, which I guess maybe was a lot of the influencer stuff before. So how does that process sort of work out? Because um, you know, I can imagine some creators are, have their own teams to do that sort of stuff and some some of them you know, probably don't so there's a you know qu- quite a spectrum i imagine of, of, of how you're dealing with that yeah i would say there's like a, a give and take between what the advertiser needs and what the creator needs if the advertiser has very strict creative flexibility we're going to have to get them the exact script to them and then work with a creator who's really good at memorizing a script while also making it feel authentic when they're actually talking about it so you don't like see their eyes moving like they're reading something somewhere or or their energy just doesn't have it. Um, When there's more creative flexibility, um, we let the creators have a little bit more fun with the script. We give them the general guideline. Um, And there's also specific creators that we seek out when they're an expert in a specific kind of uh, like template or format. So there's the interview on the street style where you need two people who are engaging, who have good mic audio on the street, who who can like have a back and forth about like, hey, like, what are you up to? I'm downloading this app. I, I'm obviously, I'm the script writer. I swear it's going to be better than that. Um, but uh, being able to find the right type of people for the right type of format is also an important part of finding creators and matching them up with demographic and brand similarities. Sydney, before you talk about sort of testing, and obviously I guess that's adding another sort of friction point in it because obviously you're doing testing and some of the testing is going, well, that just didn't work. So I'm just, I'm just maybe I, maybe it's my uh, my glass half, uh, uh, half, half full sort of, uh, or half empty, whichever way it is, um, sort of uh, mindset. I'm just thinking... This is adding a lot of hassle <laughs> to 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 my job. That I'm having to you know having to deal with all these sort of you know I've got to find the creatives. I've got to sort of match it all up, and then maybe it's not going to work. And from that point of view, I, I'll answer that question first. You know, is it am I am I being overly pessimistic about just the amount of hassle that you're dealing with to get these ads out? I think we have a pretty good system down. Our team's been in the UGC realm for over four years now. Um, and then we also work really close. Once we get the ads created uh, from the like the creative studio side of things, uh, we work really closely with uh, account managers or creative performance managers to get the ads tested. Um, so once they are ready, we'll set like a priority for testing cadence. This is usually based on like previous performance metrics for similar UGC or similar titles. However, if a creator submits an outstanding UGC video that we believe will perform really well, we'll probably set it as a higher testing priority. But there are multiple strategies behind testing UGC. So do we want to test the creator? Do we want to test the script or the concept? Do we want to test the same creator, the same script, but a different UI or gameplay asset within the UGC? So from there, we can run like A-B tests for any of these variables to to determine what performs best. Um, And then I think on top of that, to achieve like maximum impact, we'll, you know, look at the data and make any adjustments, and then we can make iterations on the UGC. So we'll continue to refine it based on testing results. Um, For example, we may see a piece of UGC uh, that works really well as a short form video, so less than 30 seconds. And then we see a top performing asset uh, within the same testing placement, also less than 30 seconds. How can we incorporate these two creatives? We'll stitch them together to make a long form iteration. Um, And then another example is we may see a piece of UGC that's uh, working really well as a portrait orientation. Uh, So we can make a landscape orientation to test in those ad placements as well. So it sounds like a lot, and maybe it is, but we've been in this space for so long that it kind of just feels natural at this point. Obviously, all these things are, are, are very different, but in terms of, you know, just a sort of a, I'm going to say like a, like an average sort of campaign, how many sort of creators would you be working with? Because effectively, what you're doing is, is you're saying, when, when this works, this sort of format is a better way of engaging with an audience than 
than, than, than other types of, 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 of UA. So it's, it's basically sort of a numbers game. So, ha, you know, roughly how many sort of creators do you need to be working with? We have our own creator platform. We have, I would say, hundreds of creators that we're working with. We have a dedicated creator team who actually manages the creators personally. They will um, help coach our creators to make better quality ads. But I think in terms of uh, specific UGC campaigns that we're doing for our advertisers, that really varies on how long we've been working with the client and what their goals are. So for example, like I would say a successful UGC campaign uh, looks different for a client who has never tested UGC before. I think in that case, we would have a lot of creators, we would have a lot of different concepts, um, value propositions, so that way we can test to understand what works best. Um, in this case, this is what, um, like learning what type of UGC does not work is just as important um, as learning what does perform well. Where on the flip side, a successful campaign for an advertiser that we've been working with for a while would include UGC creatives uh, creatives from creators who have top performing tested UGC. So probably a smaller pool of creators there. Uh, the ideas and iterations would be coming from uh, data driven metrics that we've seen before. Um, and then to these advertisers, a successful campaign uh, includes creatives that are, you know, hitting their KPIs, driving installs and app purchases and have a strong return on ad spend. So for, for the sort of the, the level of sort of work you're putting in uh, to this, even with your sort of streamlined sort of sort of flow, it seems like sort of quite a lot of work. So on the, on say a best performing sort of ad that you're put creating this way, could could you on a ballpark figure, could you say how much more effective it would be than than what we might consider a sort of standard sort of UA ad? Um, you know, would they be twice as good? three times as good or, or, or would you be hoping for them to be more than that i don't have stats maybe sydney might but um what what i've seen a lot of the times with advertisers that don't have ugc and then we start making media for them is that we'll watch as as more and more of our ads get cycled into the testing process that they'll hit the like the top one two three four five six seven spenders um so I mean, sometimes it doesn't happen and we have to reiterate and figure out new ways to make the ad work. But when when a UGC comes up against maybe something that's full gameplay, full user interface, uh, it is more engaging and it gets more clicks and, and downloads we've seen. And that's not to say that it's all UGC is the star and is doing everything Um doing all the heavy lifting because we often are deciding, well, there's a top performing gameplay ad that we can stitch within this we can have the ugc we can have the creator reacting to the top gameplay we can have them like show their phone and then cut into the gameplay so it's it's a it's a nice collaboration between ugc and top performing gameplay of some sort it's, it's more that then the ugc is sort of performing the context for sort of what you're putting in there so it's, it's a it's not an either or thing it's a sort of whatever it's, it's you know, everything sort of combined provides the um, performance on that i'd say so do you think there are any genres that it works particularly well for i mean in my stereotypical way i'm maybe I, I'm, I'm seeing more um sort of female skewed sort of games because maybe that's more of the consumption on those sort of things but probably i'm totally wrong um is there i guess is, it, is there any genre that's better is there any genre that you can't that you would say no don't, don't use this is not a technique that you should use for this sort of genre. I mean, you've already mentioned spread betting, so maybe there isn't any of those. Can you talk a bit about, you know, the um, that how it works on that sort of uh, the type of game uh, that you're that you're trying to sort of uh, advertise? A similarity to sort of a, a sports betting, something that uses real money, gaming of some sort. So I don't know if we can do shout outs to our favorite advertisers, but. Um... <laughs> Um, like papaya with their solitaire cash, that was one of the examples that I was thinking of when you you bring it. We bring in our UGC, and then all of a sudden, like top ten of the ads are all of our uh, are, are the top winners. Um, I think it's important to have UGC for those type of ads because you want to show off like the the ethos, the reliability of um, this app because it's it's. It's, you know, it's real money at stake. It's, it's something that's not as dangerous as if you 
um, like lose a round of a game that doesn't have anything to do with your investments. So it requires noting the reliability of payouts and the social proof of its credibility through the app ratings and the creator talking to the screen saying like, hey, this is legitimate. I have won money from this. You aren't going to get like in a bad situation. Um, so that's one of the ones that we've seen work really well for all formats, both talking directly to the camera, interview on the street, like a skit between two people. It's um, just worked very well for us. I think to, to add to that, Nicole, I think a good way to look at this is if UGC is not performing for a vertical, we probably just haven't found the right concept or script or value prop to to use yet. And that just requires more testing, just like any creative UGC or non uh, UGC, it just requires a lot of testing and understanding uh, the app really well to know what's going to push users to hit their goals. There's certain types of creators that you sort of have worked with, so you tend to be more focused on that, and there's just other areas that for whatever reason haven't been so utilized at the moment, so you just, you just haven't, haven't got that experience of working with them to know what works. We also watch social media trends pretty heavily to know what can transfer from Meta and TikTok into programmatic. So we'll go through phases where, you know, if there's a TikTok trend, like interview on the street was a really big trend a while ago, and it's actually transferred really well to programmatic. So, you know, we're, we're doing outbound to find those interview on the street creators. Um, and there will probably be a new uh, social media trend in a few months that we'll have to find different creators that we don't have access to right now. Um, but you know, they're, they're always available um, to do UGC for us once we find them. It's funny you mentioned the Propy one because I've actually seen those ads and they, they're, they're actually sort of quite funny. So they sort of, they get they get through the, the trust thing, sort of like, you know, because as you say, you're sort of doing things in the app and then you're getting real money out there. But, but they sort of, they sort of, uh, they sort of, st and I guess I'm not the target audience, but they sort of stood out as being sort of funny, you know, in a, in a very sort of, um, sort of influencer type way where they, they were sort of, I don't know, to me they felt sort of somewhat over the top sort of, funny yes yeah, so, you know but i guess that's what you're aiming for it's always interesting to figure out the balance between entertainment and um trying to weave in the value propositions how how can you like stay high energy enough and interesting enough to capture people's attention um while still driving home the points and not just the points that you can win money but also that it is reliable um and still doing that while sometimes using really goofy formats is is interesting I, I think that we've seen even these types of formats when they're goofy still work for things that are um, even non-gaming so like cri crypto apps and and things of that of that format um credit apps things like that it um it it really just depends and it's just all about experimentation to figure out how much goof you can do and how much um how much credibility you can sort of squeeze from that kind of format how involved are the the sort of the influencers or whatever whatever term you're using with the creators involved in this i imagine it's, again it's a bit of a spectrum but it, it, when you were talking there about sort of different types of sort of apps or you know from games um i guess something like crypto they, that sort of influence have a very particular take on how they would on what you know they're not so bothered about the content maybe if this is an ad but how they would present that would they just be inherently this is how i sort of do these things and that's how my audience is and if you weren't into you know if you weren't part of that audience that would be hard for you to sort of know how do they feed back into the process yeah so a lot of them have you know made hundreds if not thousands of ads on or apps i would say that these creators have made hundreds if not thousands of pieces of media for their uh, tiktok pages or instagram reel pages um, so they have like a very specific way that they like to do things um, we can always tell them like hey we'd actually like you to try something in a different way but because they sort of honed themselves for capturing the attention of a very specific type of audience we kind of believe in them and their style for how um for how they they work and if it doesn't work then you know, we'll try a different creator for a different uh, a different way of presenting the energy. But they also do take feedback well. Um, so that is also something that is um, lovely to, to deal with. I guess you sort of talking about the sort of, about the sort of attention economy and all that sort of stuff. How, how quickly do the metas get used up? Because obviously everyone's looking at what everyone else is doing and, and you're looking to see what the trends are, as you mentioned, Sydney. And, and I guess part, part of the freshness of this stuff is that it's new, which means that people yeah you're, you're finding out something that works really well and then i guess over time you get a bit diminishing returns on it because sort of it becomes 
you know, interviews on the street, not like anything, but you know, that becomes, oh yeah, everyone's doing that. How quickly does that sort of stuff happen or is it, or is it a little bit slower than, than, than I'm sort of suggesting? It's slower definitely in mobile advertising than it is, like on DSPs than it is um, like TikTok because that's like people got short attention spans. There's a new audio clip already that's hitting the charts that you've got to make your new dance to. Um, but for, for us, you know, it, it, there, there is a, I mean, if you can get onto the concept and the format first, that means that you have like legs up, you have a month up, maybe two for over other folks who maybe don't have the resources that we have to find these creators and make these ads. So interview on the street still works for us because just because you see that it works for another app doesn't mean you have the resources to go out and find these creators and get those get those scripts drafted and figuring out what works so i think it, it there's a slower turnover for for sort of the formats that we use um and when we do see that like an an ad no longer works because people have seen it, it we you know we switch things up we change the location we change the hook we 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 make sure that because just because a person on TikTok sees one interview on the street once doesn't mean that they're going to next time they see another one skip through it because like, oh, I've seen that format. But you haven't seen like what the actual internal content of it is, which is where like an interesting hook comes up where it's like, oh, I didn't know that this is an ad about so and so app because the the question that they ask at first has nothing to do with what I expect the app to be about. And, and again, this will be a length of string sort of sort of answer, I suppose. But in terms of like sort of campaign lengths, is sort of you mentioned that you would, you know, during a maybe a campaign, you would you would sort of be changing up. You'd have like a core cool sort of bit of content, and then you'd be changing that up, maybe putting in new new gameplay or, or, or you know, you can re- sort of remix it to, to use a sort of different term. Um, could could you sort of give us an idea of, of of sort of how you know would a campaign run, you know? for a month and you'd sort of do 10 different variations obviously it'll be you know all these things could be shorter or longer but just to get a sort of rough feel of sort of how long these things are going on for and how and how much you are sort of sort of changing it up could you sort of give an idea around that yeah i can touch on this i think a best practice is to to gather enough learnings would be to test a creative for at least a month um we've had we've had instances where a creative might go live um but it doesn't actually take off and start performing for two weeks uh, so then, you know, if you were to have just paused it after two weeks, you never would have gotten the insights um, that that you're actually getting from the creative. And then on the other end of things, we've seen cre- or campaigns and creator or sorry, let me go back. We've seen creatives um, run over a year um, where we've actually had to extend the license with the with the creator. Um, so it really varies. Um, and then there's also seasonality. So uh, for for example, we're working with a sports betting app. NFL season, football season is coming up. Um, so that's going to be a really um, good time to start testing our UGC. They'll probably run from September all the way to February and we'll make iterations um, and produce new creatives throughout that entire NFL season for the for the advertiser. Well, that kind of makes sense. And if, you, if, if for good campaigns you have that duration, then it sort of makes sense all the work you're doing in the early stages to sort of get the thing up and running. I was just thinking if you're changing these things all the time, that, that, that makes more sense. And, it, and in terms of particularly on the, I guess on the game side uh, now, I don't know how many sort of people, uh, what sort of percentage of sort of mobile game UA will be using this sort of stuff. If people are sort of thinking about it or, you know, come across this for the first time, could you sort of give any advice on, on, you know, what they should be thinking about? It seems like a very important sort of technique. So if people aren't using it, I guess they should be, at least, I assume you would say they should at least be investigating it. So so if, if people are in that sort of situation of, of sort of being being interested but not knowing anything, what are sort of the next steps for them to, to be thinking about, you know, using it and, and, and getting engaged? If you want to work for a liftoff, you know, we can... If you want to work with us, we can definitely offer it. Um, but Sydney, I think you probably have a little more nuanced of a take. <laughs> I think it's important to just know your audience, know what works well within your app. But the main thing is to be open to testing, be open to experimenting. Um, you may think you know, you know, the right creator. You may think you know the right value proposition, but there's so many other things that could work, and you would be surprised. You know, there's. Uh, we have some clients who their primary audience is, you know, 35 plus year old females and younger male creators might actually work. So it's just about finding what is going to, what is going to engage the audience and actually retain the users. Um, so just be open to experimenting. 
obviously, you know, people might have ideas about, you know, we this is our audience, this is our segmentation, that they'll probably know that sort of stuff. But companies like Liftoff, I guess other companies are there, but but we're talking Liftoff here. You know, you you sort of do all that heavy lifting for them. I mean, that's the expertise you bring to the table. You know, they don't need to know any, they don't need to know any influencers or anything like that. You, you, that's the sort of process that you would take them through. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. Come to us. <laughs> we're, we're super collaborative, um, and that's what you know. I love working with the clients because, like I said, they know their their app their brand they know it best um but we know the creator side the ugc side so when we work together it, it you know performance really grows and it's cool to see kind of as we come to finish up um it's always sort of difficult uh, to look to the future but is, do you have any sort of pointers towards the way you think the industry is sort of moving any sort of trends you think will be sort of particularly sort of supercharged in the next sort of year or so? I'm particularly interested in the collaboration between uh, UGC and uh, interactive ads like playables. We've seen that work in the past quarter where even previously successful interactive ads um, with just a little bit of UGC response at the end based on sort of how the ad went for them, if they won or they lost the, the mini game within the interactive ad I think that that's definitely going to become more prevalent. I'm really excited about creating more of those creatives, so you'll see them around. Um, we've even like got creators in um, in like banner ads at some point, or different different type non gaming and gaming interactives. So I see the future of who knew more UGC in more formats. Who would have guessed that that would be my pitch? Excellent. Uh, good. Any any closing words from you, Sydney? I think in terms of, you know, what what's next for UGC is it's really going to be dependent uh, other than outside of, you know, the interactive, like Nicole said, but it's going to be dependent on what the creators are coming up with on social platforms. Like we follow those trends and it transfers really well into DSPs. So like I said, we're always watching, um, you know, what's next. We're trying to make those uh, social media trends into ads. Um, so yeah, I think that's kind of what's next. It's going to be depend on what the creators are putting out there and how we can, you know, tweak those into ad placements. And not to throw an entirely different topic at the very end is maybe a teaser if you have me back on or anything, but I work, um, I work, uh, with sort of the combination of AI and UGC. I know everybody thinks AI is the future. It's probably because it is, um, but utilizing AI in order to, you know, not do necessarily a zero to one ad for uh, with AI, but using uh, tools to translate them into different geos or figuring out how to like slightly tweak the language so that you don't have to have a creator film two exact pieces of media with just one slight variable change. Like there's a way to use AI to get that small change to be made. Um, so there's just a lot of... Um, there's a lot of opportunity with with AI. Uh, I know it's a it's a it's a hot topic. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good point there because I, I guess generally I think when it comes to AI, there's there's sort of this the immediate and maybe you know medium term sort of production productivity efficiency sort of things where it's doing these small tweaks, and then I guess there's the much um, broader sort of conceptual idea of of sort of letting AI go off and sort of do its own things, which we probably, you know, won't be discussing now. But 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 both of those have, you know one of the one of them is obviously uh, maybe a bit, a bit further in the future. But they're both sort of exciting in their own way and and, and AI is definitely usable right now um as well. So that was a that was a good a good uh, a good closing point there. Well done. <laughs> Uh, so um, no, that's really, really I really enjoyed that. I feel I feel I am much more educated now, and, and I think you know as a closing remark for me, as someone who sort of to a degree sort of looked at the use of sort of influencers generally in sort of gaming advertising, um, and sometimes looked at that with a little bit of scepticism. I think what you've been explaining to me here sort of makes total sense. Where obviously you're using the influencers sort of audience, and you're using the, you know their style, their, their voice, so to speak, in sort of in the advert, but you're you've built these sort of processes where you know you're sort of shaping them in how in in making effective adverts so it's actually sort of seems like the maturing of, of sort of influencers you know this this sort of uh sort of process is is, is exactly sort of what was required because i guess we, it, a few years ago we saw you know influencers making loads of money doing ads that probably weren't 
weren't, perform- weren't very good performing, but they sort of seemed like, oh, we, you know, you could get headlines because you're doing ads with these well-known sort of people, but didn't actually work and, and wasn't really scalable across, you know, all the games and apps that you guys work with. This that seems like a lot more sort of stable and, and, and sort of performative um, sort of situation. We get to be slightly more in control of the script, so it's not just clickbait that gets a download, but then somebody deletes the app right away. Like, we can know what the correct combination is of what gets the user's attention, while also what features can we can we feature of the game in order to get the folks that are going to be long-term players. It's balance. Good. Well, thank you very much uh, to Nicole and Sydney for their expertise. Thank you. It was a lovely time. Thank you. Well, you can come back. I don't, I don't often don't often get uh, such such kind words. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, thanks to you for watching, listening. Uh, hope you are consuming the podcast. Remember, every episode we are talking to people who are building out the whole mobile games industry. So we covering everything. Done a bit of UA recently, but uh, we've done AI in the past, and, and uh, I'm sure we'll be coming back to look at the big trends in mobile gaming in 2024 and 2025. So uh, don't miss out. Do subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.